I received a few questions on my YouTube videos and as much as I try to answer them directly on the video, uh, sometimes I just feel that it's better to show you uh, how, how, how I do certain things that perhaps on the video I published the previous week wasn't that clear. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going uh, I'm, I'm to create a Q&A video. I'm going to collect some of the questions uh, around the different videos that, I, that I've got and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just demonstrate. Now, obviously I can't demonstrate everything. Uh, you know, if your question is uh, to show you something that is completely inside one of the parts that I've already created, uh, I'm not just going to undo that to, 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 to show because it just I might break it and it took me so much time to put it together I really don't want to do it apart. Uh, but what I can, I'll just, I'll just try. For example, some of the questions that I've been getting um, are around uh, ProSim. Uh, from basic like, how do you drag a window from one side to, uh, from, uh, from one monitor to another? Uh, how do you resize the, the windows? Uh, and if I have connection problems, what can I do? And by connection problem, I mean when, when you launch uh, one of the modules of ProSim says that it cannot connect to either the server of ProSim or to or the, simu the, the ProSim server doesn't connect to the simulator and so on. So I'll, I'll show you how I do most of the setups. This is not going to be a tutorial on ProSim, especially because I have not gone through all the settings, so it will not be a complete one. But I do want to answer those questions where people have had some issues, uh, let's say connecting the simulator to ProSim, or especially, like in my case, in my, like in my cockpit, I have multiple computers. I have parts of ProSim on one computer and other parts on another one. Uh, what I'm going to show you the, this video right now it's a test computer so everything is on, on one computer uh, but the the idea behind is is simple I'll, I'll just explain it to you once you once you launch ProSim there is a few things you need to take into account uh, and that is your IP addresses if you decide uh, if you decide to have different parts of ProSim on different computers, you need to make sure that all of the computers can talk to each other, and then consequently the ProSim can talk to all the other modules. So you have to look at first of all your um, uh, work group. So if you go if you right click on computer, you go into properties, you'll see that uh, work group here. In my case, work group is actually called work group, and I I think that you know unless you go change it yourself, most of the computers they actually are called uh, work group work group by default. You can change it, you can name it whatever you want. You just need to be sure uh, to remember that if you create a network within your house, within your environment, you have multiple computer on that. You want to have multiple computer on that same network. The work group name you're going to be giving here has to be the same the same you can call it joker you can call it fsx you can call it whatever you want as long as it's the same that so that the, the the machines can talk to each other this is one thing you want to do then the other thing you need to be able to assign a uh, you want to assign a fixed ip address that's usually the best solution uh, to to each of the computers this is why uh, this is because if you switch your router off uh, sometimes what the router does tends to reassign uh, t the router tends every time gets switched back on and the computer switches on uh, it tends to reassign always the same IP address but that does not always happen and if it doesn't happen then when you go and set up the IP address in ProSim and uh, you've set up one that I don't know maybe the day before you, you had it set up uh, then the router goes ahead and changes that IP address then of course uh, you, ProSim is not going to be able to talk to his modules. So what you want to do, you go on each computer, you assign some uh, some dedicated IP address. There is a full tutorials on on YouTube on how to do that. There is <laughs> there is thousands of them. It's very very simple. Now this is the uh, main uh, main module of uh, of ProSim. Uh, don't worry about saying simulator not connected. This is just happens because I don't have uh, my FSX uh, running at the moment. There is no need to have a run. Um, so what you need, to, what you want to do is you take the IP address uh, of the computer where this is installed. You take a note, and then when you go ahead and let's say you uh, open from a different computer one of the navigational displays, 
you right click on them as you can see here it says status connected the reason why it's connected is very simply because everything is on the same machine so, so obviously they can read each other but if they weren't you just go into configuration and you tell them what's the IP address of the server and that's it and you'll see that they will communicate to each other you now if you have a full cockpit you have uh, the captain display, you have the first officer display, you have the upper ACAS and the lower ACAS, you, you do need to do this work on all of them. And like I said before, if you set up fixed IP address on all your, on, on all your computer, you have to do this only once. You'll never have to do it again. Another question was how did I build the lower ACAS monitor into the CDU and how everything kind of fitted together? To demonstrate how I build the CDU, I'm going to use SketchUp. Now, I, I didn't create a plan in SketchUp to actually build the CDU, so asking for a plan is not going to help. Uh, but I did make this quick and dirty uh, overview just so that I can answer some of the questions. So let's assume this is the CDU. Uh, I need to be able to place both uh, both CDUs and the lower ACAS monitor in a way that all three of those items are on the same angle but because one of the CDU is different from the others uh, I need to come up with a slightly different uh, solution so first of all I built a little plan a little horizontal plank here um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the working CDU which has like i explained has this 90 degree back that can just easy as this sit on this board uh, and the way it sits the angle is completely the same as the angle of the uh, sides of the cdu bay to add the second cdu we're adding an open cockpit cdu this is a dummy one it's not it's not real like the other and as you can see it does not have the 90 degree back that we need so that it can stand on the on this uh, platform so i had to go ahead and create something that uh, would simply ensure that the cdu could rest on top of it the the cdu has six screws four on the corner and two in the middle and those screws are are long they're sticking outside so what i've done was uh, I've pressed, I've placed the CDU on top of the uh, of this stand. I pressed it down, and the four screws that stick out have left a mark. I've then removed the CDU, drilled through those uh, marks, and so that when I put the CDU back, I could simply just plug it in, and the CDU doesn't move anymore. The monitor for the lower ECAS is the same concept. It's flat, it's rectangular, and it needs to stand at the same degree, so it needs to be adapted on this stand. What I've done is I removed the four screws that, uh, that uh, were holding the, uh, the stand of the monitor. I threw the stand away, and I've made four holes on the, uh, on the panel that I created. And then with those original four screws, I, I screw the monitor to the panel. So also the monitor doesn't go anywhere. Uh, as you can see, there is a gap between each side of the monitor. So what I've done is I used uh, a sponge, uh, a sponge uh, isolation that you can buy in, either, either, uh, in uh, any hardware shop. It is the type that you usually use for uh, either windows or doors that has a little sticker at the back. Uh, I've uh, I've colored I painted it uh, the same gray and I I fitted in right between the CDU and the monitor. Now here the gaps looks really big, but in reality, on, on the actual cockpit is not that big. The this little sponge fits really nicely, and since the cockpit usually it's it's a little bit not dark but a little bit darker than a normal room with lights on, uh, you really don't don't see it and and also there is no light shining through the monitor finally on top of the monitor i placed the typical boeing uh window frame that you can buy in the in, in the shops is the same window frames i use for the upper ACAS or for the navigational uh displays and this is basically how it's done now at the back of the dummy cdu there is no cable absolutely nothing coming out however at the back of the monitor and the um 
uh, the, the real CDU, there are two VGA connections plus the power. Uh, the VGA connections go directly, they go on the graphic cards of my PCs. Uh, at the back of the PC, I have DVI connection, so you just use a, a small adapter to, to translate the VGA into, into a DVI, and you're ready to go. You got a working uh, CPU. And then one other question was around annunciators and LEDs, how do you connect together, and uh, how many do you need? Uh, so let's look at how we're going to connect uh, first one, and then two LEDs, since in an annunciator you generally need two LEDs. To connect LEDs in an annunciator, when you open the annunciator you see that you can fit two LEDs. There should be a little plastic mask at the bottom of the annunciator. You'll have two little holes and then you'll fit two legs. A LED has always two legs. Uh, one is for the positive and one is for the negative. But if you look closer, one of the legs is longer than, than the other. The longer leg is always the positive and the shorter leg is always the negative. Let's check how uh, our LED is connected. Uh, in, a, in a MIP obviously you use your card which draws power from the USB cable that is attached to your computer. In this case I'm going to use a battery, it's a 9 volt battery. Um, I am not 100% sure if the 9 volts is too much for the LED so I'm going to, I could be burning it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, I'm also going to use a little resistor but don't just don't get confused by this. Um, you won't need this in your in your circuit. So here's the battery. The red cable represents the plus. It's written on the battery. Uh, you'll connect your uh, your cable to the to the positive side of your power source. Then the other side of the cable goes directly at attached to the long leg. Of your LED. So this is our LED and this is our long leg. The long leg represents the positive side. So I'm going to attach this to the positive and then I'm going to use this resistor uh, just so I don't burn the LED but ideally the negative cable goes from the short leg of the LED back to the negative of the battery. Simple as that. I'm just going to put this in the middle as a safety precaution. There we go. And I'm going to attach the negative to the end of the resistor and then from the negative we're going to go back to our power source on the negative side. And here we go. Your LED is on. It's as simple as that. Like I said, forget about the resistor. You won't need that in your uh, in your setup. Okay, so now we know that in an annunciator goes uh, two LEDs inside. So we're going to replicate the same thing we've done before, but this time we're going to use two LEDs. This is our supply. The red cable is our positive. Goes through our wire. The wire can be as long as you, well relatively as long as you want and it gets connected to the long leg which is the positive leg of the LED. Here we go. The negative leg goes into the other positive leg of the new LED. And we'll connect them like this. And finally, we, I'm going to add this resistor just to avoid blowing up the LEDs, burning the LEDs, not blowing them up. And the other side of the resistor goes to the negative power. There we go. And you now have two LEDs on. So guys, this concludes the Q&A sessions. Uh, I hope you find this useful. Uh, like always, comment, let me know what you think. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll try and do them better. Uh, and really, wh whatever I can, I'll try and reproduce what I've done. Uh, otherwise, I, do, I just do some examples or, or I'll design it. So don't forget to subscribe if you like this. And see you on the next video. Bye.